So now that our time in Ecuador is coming to a close, was this a good decision for you coming here? I'm glad we took the detour. I'm glad we didn't hurry over to Pacific from Panama to the Marquesas like everybody else. Um, the sailing has been great, and this inland trip that we've been on for the last two weeks now has been pretty cool. It's brought us to some yeah. pretty insane places. The crater lake, renting the motorcycles, all that was really cool. I know we have lots of stuff to do. I have to get the boat ready for a long passage and all that. But before we can leave here, there's one last thing that I want to do. Me too. Climb Chimborazo. Visit the Amazon. You told me that you wanted to climb the mountain with me. I never would say anything like that. Get in touch with your inner mountain goat. <laughs> Not after the Kilotoa experience, Ooh, no way. That was bad, yeah. So I guess we're splitting up, yeah? Looks like it. Good luck in the Amazon with all the mosquitoes and foraging for food. Try not to get eaten by anything. Well, good luck on a mountain with your snow. That's pretty much all there is up there. <laughs> <laughs> John, the owner of Indian Adventures, he owns all the refuges, the two refuges on Chimborazo. So he said I could stay there up, up there two nights if I wanted to. So AMS, or acute mountain sickness, happens to 20% of people above 2,500 meters and 40% of people above 3,000 meters. This base camp is 4,000 meters. I'm trying to stay up there for one night to acclimatize and then the next night climb the mountain. Think it's gonna work? All right, I'm here with John Paredes. Uh, he's the owner of Andean Adventures and super cool guy, giving me everything I need. You see everything back here, top quality gear. And uh, the dinner's waiting for me at the refuge, so I gotta run. I took three different buses and now I'm 22 hours into the journey and about ready to get there. The, the landscape changed so much from, from where I went and it's super hot, but not as humid as I would have expected it, so, <laughs> but at least I'm not in snow right now. So I had an absolutely horrible night's sleep, uh, if you call it sleep. I laid in bed and turned with a headache for 12 hours. I went to bed at 7 and I actually got to sleep at 7 this morning. Slept for two and a half hours. Now. I'm just waiting until tonight. We're gonna to leave at 11 p.m. tonight. So hopefully the altitude sickness goes away a little bit. I'm gonna try walking a little bit. I still haven't seen this mountain. <laughs> I'm gonna climb it and I haven't, even, I haven't even seen it yet. Yeah, according to the pictures, it's pretty. All right, it's about 12.30. Uh, I feel way, way, way better now. That kicked my ass, dude. I've never had altitude sickness and that sucks. <laughs> What's weird is it didn't happen when I first got up here. It happened when I went to bed. So I guess your breathing, your respiratory pattern changes. Right about 7 o'clock when I went to bed, I had a headache from hell that lasted until 7 this morning, even 8. I got a little bit of sleep from like then till 9.30, 10. Went down and had breakfast. I came back up here and passed out again. And uh, I just woke up and I feel way better. No more headache. I actually feel strong. I feel like I can breathe. So that was definitely good to spend um, two days up here acclimatizing. That really sounds like fun, Jamie. In the meantime, I made it to the Yachana Lunch in the middle of the jungle. I was given a pair of rubber boots and a mission. Me and my guide Alfonso were supposed to go around the whole property of the lodge and visit the neighboring farmers to gather all the ingredients for tonight's dinner. We started with the most important part of it, the dessert. So here we have cacao. This is where chocolate comes from. What do we do? So we cut it like this, like that. Here you have the cacao beans. With the help of YouTube, Alfonso and I made some really delicious brownies. We even added a special ingredient, 
that made them invisible. Next, the main course. With the help of a manual, no, a pedal grinder, we turned a whole tub of corn into mash. That corn mash was then put into corn leaves with a little bit of cheese with the result of the traditional dish, umidas. As a side dish, we had heart of palm salad, freshly harvested of course. Now that I know how to prepare that, I'm gonna make that a regular on Zingara. I also learned that these spiky leaves that grew all around the Yachana Lodge, prepared like spinach, made for a great salad. We harvested some yuca that would later be turned into fries. We got some ginger for tea and a couple of different fruit for juice. This fruit you probably won't recognize, but you may know his red cousin, the dragon fruit. The pitahaya, the smaller and yellow version of it, is sweeter and more tasty. And who would have guessed that this stick-like looking, can you call it fruit, would actually be marshmallow-like inside. By the time we decided to go home, we had collected a variety of fruit and vegetables, way more than the cook had asked for. Dinner was super delicious and I dropped dead into bed before the sun went down. Alright, so this is the last chance I'm going to get to do a video before it gets dark. It's about 6 o'clock right now, 5 o'clock, and we're going to wake up at 10, take a leave at 11. There's a bunch of people going. Uh, there's a guide and a guy from Russia, my guide and me, and then another guide and two people from Austria. My guide is, is very knowledgeable and he's been up a hundred thousand times so I'm just gonna follow him <laughs> and he'll do the pacing. So he just explained to me the route we're gonna take. I'm gonna show you guys. This is the refuge. So this is the refuge we're at now. We're gonna go up to the other refuge and take a break for 10 minutes. And then we're gonna go up here. And we're going to take a break right here, put on crampons, and then we're going to, this is rock climbing right here. We're going to do about 100 feet of rock climbing vertical, and then we're going to get here. And this is where it's going to get into the glacier and really tough. And this is like 45 degrees. He said there was a really steep grade about here. And then this is the first summit, and then you go down, and that's the second summit. This is actually the higher summit. When you get to the top, you have to just check the conditions and see if you're willing to go on. But it's only another 45 minutes or so or an hour to get to the other summit. So, wish me luck. So have you guys ever had something that you just felt like you had to do? This was this thing for me. I felt like if I was going to be in Ecuador, I had to try to climb this mountain. It's real special because the earth is an oblate spheroid and this is technically higher than Everest if you measure it from the center of the Earth. So it's the point on the face of the Earth that's closest to space. It's the highest mountain in Ecuador. It's challenging, but a basic climber can do it. And I don't have any climbing experience, so all in all, it was irresistible. First stop, the Wimper Lodge, 5,000 feet. Doing good. Ready to rock. Putting crampons on. As soon as we put the crampons on, things got serious. And at one point I remember sitting down and thinking, I wonder what Kim's doing. I'm not only interested in the flora and fauna of the Amazon, but also how people live here. Visiting the healer was a trip. He cleansed us 
with leaves that grew in the Amazon. They were to take the bad energy out of us and they, they turned black where they touched us. Also, my guide Alfonso had a bad flu since I arrived already. So the healer boiled up like a special mixture of herbs and tobacco and put it up his nose. It hurt like hell and he was not having a good time. <laughs> Worth it though, because the flu was gone the next day. Next thing I knew, I was introduced into the discipline of blow piping. <laughs> <laughs> we were practicing on a papaya, but the real deal for the real hunters, they would dip the tips of the arrows in um, poison from a frog skin, so that the animal hit with that dart would be paralyzed. I was quite a natural in that, and I didn't miss the papaya once. But the next discipline I had my trouble with. Luckily, when it was time for me to leave, I was given a hand-whittled ironwood spear so that I could practice at home. Getting this nine-foot weapon from the jungle to the boat would be a mission in itself. I have severe altitude sickness. That's why I was collapsing on the way up. It takes forever to get down. I just stop every like uh, 20 steps or something. Oh, it hurts so bad. I've, I've never had a headache like this. So bad. And then walking downhill exacerbates it. <sighs> I almost made it to the top, man. I mean, it's a 5750, and the top is at 6300. It's a good decision to turn back though. I'm gonna die up there. There's a little rock climbing part. He had to propel me down because I couldn't. My balance is a little messed up. Oh god. Oh, this fucking hurts, man. I'm really hoping that we're able to get down to a level where this isn't happening to me anymore. Oh my god. It's the worst. It's the worst. So after hiking and this hot day, we're gonna get some refreshment while we're gonna go tubing yeah, on the Napa River. On the Napa River. down. I've never had a headache this bad in my life. Oh, it fucking hurts. Oh. I am never going to go on a mountain again. This altitude thing is not, not for me. It's pretty here, but man, oh, it's not worth it. I'm a sea level guy. Oh, you don't even know how bad this hurts. I've never had a headache this bad in my life. We're almost down. We climbed from dang near the top. Oh, I almost made it, but I was like fighting this altitude sickness and I didn't know it. And I kept like collapsing. And then the guy would be like, let's go back. And I'd say, no, I'm gonna do it. Oh, that was a bad decision. Finally, 
we turned back after some other people said there was avalanche danger and I got the worst altitude sickness. I mean, like throwing up, horrible headache. Oh God, it hurts so bad, it still hurts. I, I gotta just get off this mountain. Get to Rio Bumba as soon as I can. That's the only way to fix it. Oh, I can't even walk. Every step makes it hurt. <sighs> Great idea, James. Well, let's climb Chimborazo. I can't tell you guys how happy I am to be off that mountain. I'm not kidding. I'll never do that again. Do you I... wish you would have chosen my adventure? Come with me? <laughs> oh, let's see. Making brownies and throwing spears or almost dying of altitude sickness. Hmm. Seriously, though. Yeah. You're glad you went up to Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so glad. It was a really cool. Uh, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that I didn't make it, but I totally understand. It was stupid of me not to acclimatize for a couple days or even a week. Uh, most of the people that do that say that you have to climb three or four mountains before Chimborazo because it's so high. I really want to tell you guys that I'm going to try again and I'm going to make it and I'm going to climb that mountain. Not going to happen. I am never going to try that again. I'll stick to what I know best. <laughs> he had to repel me down the, the climbing part because I was so hurting I couldn't even climb. Oh, what is life without a little adventure, right? <laughs> Uh, but overall, yes, I'm happy I did that. Uh, and you really enjoyed your time alone in the jungle, right? This was the first time solo traveling since I met you. You know, before that I was touring Mexico and I had a great time. And it was good to see um, that I could still do it <laughs> with only a backpack on my back. And um, the Amazon was the perfect destination. For any of you that are planning to go to um, South America anytime soon or that are trying to find a good destination for a family vacation, I can only recommend the Yachana Lodge in the Amazon. I learned so much, and so much of that knowledge is gonna come in really handy um, while we're underway. I will put the website below of Yachana Lodge so you guys can look into it. I learned a lot, and I really wanna go back. This concludes our Ecuador videos. Some of the great things we got to do here that we didn't show you guys were uh, Kimmy's family came down. So we haven't been blogging very much in the last two weeks because Kim's family's been here. Hey! hey hello! Good good time. Time. Good 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 time. Time. <laughs> and we went to the place where they make Panama hats. Monte Cristi. Didn't even know they were made in Ecuador, but made by hand from palm leaves. And you and your dad bought one. Yeah, <laughs> that was cool. Panama hats traditionally come from Ecuador. The reason they're called Panama hats though is that during the construction of the Panama Canal, the workers would wear them and that's when they became famous. Ecuador just had so many different things to see and all that in a country that's relatively small, really a great place to go. We spent five months there. It was a really cool place. If you get the chance, it's a little bit hard to get there uh, By sail boat. <laughs> sailing there from Panama was never fun for anybody that did it. If you go up to Costa Rica and come down with a little more of an angle, it, for us it was a great sail, one tack the whole way. That's my recommendation for you sailors out there. And everybody that's traveling by car or by plane doesn't have any excuse not to go. One note, if you notice Kimmy's shirt, this is from our friends at Tula's on the Summer. If you have a favorite sailing channel, go buy a shirt from that sailing channel. Get a represent. Gotta represent. <laughs> now it's time to get back to the boat and get it ready for our next adventure. So in case you wondered what a pineapple plant looks like, that's the pineapple plant. And there's a pineapple growing on it. You can just plant a crown of any pineapple and this plant will come out of that. And I heard it takes a year for a pineapple to grow and per plant there's only one pineapple coming out. Yeah, that's it. That's it about my pineapple knowledge.